Well, what a celebration this is. 50 years, my, my, my. You know, just to even clear my own mind up, I, I went back through our records and made sure I had some dates and some information down. And, and so just some dates to make sure I have this exactly right. Our first church service in my mom's house was in September 1972, that's 50 years ago. And that's our anniversary. We were there in our house for a little while. Then we outgrew the house and moved over in one of our buildings on the ranch that we used for a summer camp. We were there for a few years. And then we moved down here on this piece of property where we are today. We moved on this piece of property. Our first building here was in 1979. Now, that was quite a deal. Our first building here, I look back over some of the records and it cost $5 a square foot to build it. What's building now? $150 a foot, 200 at, at foot? At least. $5 a square foot, $45,000, and that was more money than we could even Comparable. imagine. Yeah. Could even imagine. But that was our first building here. Then Christian Ministries Academy started the first class September 1981. That's 42 years ago. And then Leaders Academy, where we brought in these college age interns to stay here and live on our campus. That started in September 1985. That's 37 years ago. Paul, you weren't here when this thing first started, right. but you came pretty soon after we were in the infancy stage right. of this ministry. So you've got a pretty good perspective. You're getting old, man. I know it. This is, you've been here a long time. A long time. Paul, you came to Leaders Academy uh, and just talk a little bit about the facilities that were here uh, when you came. And um, let's just kind of go back and relive a little bit of those right. days. Yeah. Well, you don't have to talk much because there wasn't hardly, <laughs> there <laughs> wasn't really anything Well, we here. had this one building that we're in. We did. This step down was not there. That was an addition later. It was just this center building, no kitchen, no side wing. Mm -hmm. Uh, my office is in where the little copy room is. That's right. And then you had a, you had a broom closet. Yeah. Is that so yeah, it's not there anymore. But when you come through the entrance of what is now our CMA Chapel building, there were a couple of little rooms, and so I had me two short filing cabinets and a piece of plywood that I stained, and that was my office desk. Well, you came on sort of as our, I guess maybe our first maintenance guy right. here, yeah. and then. It wasn't long till you started teaching a Monday night class, right. mm -hmm. and we started working into some classes mm -hmm. uh, for you to teach with you doing maintenance. You know, the thing I wanted to ask you today is when you were an intern here, mm -hmm. we didn't have all these buildings no. here. This was we were out here in the middle of nowhere. This was country when you were here. Right. What was going on here, or clear because it wasn't our facilities. What was going on here that you said I'm going to stay here? I want to plug in and live. Why didn't you go back to Texas? You were in the heat right. and air conditioned yeah. business. You could have gone back and made a great living. Why didn't you go sure. back home? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I even got offered a business from a place that I used to work. But, you know, Tim, and I was telling your mom this too in our conversation that we were having. You know, I, I just had never been around some authentic people who loved Jesus who weren't weird. <clears throat> you know, I, I'd got taken to some meetings with my mom a couple of times and they were weird yep. and but and then on the other side of the coin it was my father who was an oilman and a cattleman but he wasn't spiritual at all he was he was tough mm -hmm. but he wasn't spiritual you know and i think coming here and connecting with you especially um you're on a ranch raising cattle you know but at the same time you're a man who loved the lord had deep convictions, was was led by the Holy Spirit, and it was y'all's focus has always been and still is today was just about people, you know, investing in to people, and it was here that my life was so changed, and that's what caused me to stay in this place. Not to mention the fact that I was really being mentored heavily by you. You know, you took time to invest into me in those early years you, you know you and i motorcycle rode together and mm -hmm. quail hunted together and did family vacations together and you know and i didn't necessarily realize it at the time that you were mentoring me but i look back now and i can see the importance of that relational connection 
And your mom had the same thing with me, but I watched that with a lot of people. You know, I saw a lot of people in your home that you invested yourself with outside of church, your finances, your rooms in your house. And man, I just really got a vision that I saw people's lives being really changed and I wanted to be a part of that because I, had, I was one of those people who experienced that change. Well, what always, I guess, stuck out to me um, in, in Christianity, because I was like you, I saw so many weirdos. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it just that spirituality was not practical for them. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, I wanted to see Christians stay married, pay their bills, right. raise their children, work in the community mm -hmm. and be a godly influence in life. That's and that's it. what really stuck out yeah, to right. me is yeah. what Christianity was missing. Yes. And that, that became I, the call that was on my life. That's right, that's right. And I remember in those uh, early years when I, well, I know you started Applied Life when you were 28. Yep. And so three years later in 1988 is when I came. So, you know, you were in your very early 20s. I was in my early, I mean, your early 30s. 30s. I was in my yeah. early 20s. And, you, you know, seeing a guy your age, so young, start a Bible college out in the middle of a cow pasture, you know, it was kind of, for lack of a better word, kind of cultish looking, yeah. you yeah. know, because it wasn't your traditional denominational church where services were held, mm -hmm. you know, 30 minutes a week, an hour a week, and that's it. But that wasn't your vision. Your vision was you wanted to impact real deliverance and change and people getting hold of the word and literally turning around a family tree. You know, like for me coming from a broken home mm -hmm. and just alcoholism, well, there's no way that my life was gonna be transformed the way that it needed to be doing a 30 minute a week yeah. you know, yeah. sermon at church. And so for you to have applied life like you did, and of course, you know, when CMA started that, once again, that to be able to really affect students' lives, you know, we're mm -hmm. teaching English, we're teaching math, we're teaching science, but at the same time, we're imparting a biblical worldview into yes. the hearts of young men yep. and young women. And so that was the whole thing that changed me. So, and obviously, you know, the facilities, they're mm -hmm. not, necessarily that great now <laughs> not now either. really because yeah. we never have put our money in the yeah. buildings you know i mean we just built a new building right next to us classroom buildings mm -hmm. and you know number one it's paid for yeah N number two y you know it, it's a nice mm -hmm. building but not nearly as nice as what a lot of people would build it but that's not our emphasis and our mm -hmm. focus we want to take our money and invest it into our young people and so for me coming here you know, we were very limited on land. As a matter of fact, I remember the buildings that you did have when I got here for Applied Life were old used buildings that you, that you yep. bought that were eaten up with termites. Yep. I mean, literally buildings. certain corners of the yep. building you could fall through if you weren't careful. Yep. But you were just doing everything that you could with what you had yep. to answer the call of God on your life. And, and that was another thing that really impressed me about Christian ministries about applied life, it was like a lot of people, they're not gonna do something unless they have the very best before they start. Mm -hmm. And you were like, man, you know, we'll put a rock up against the door to hold it open. We'll do the very best we can, but we're gonna answer the call of God and then we'll just believe God will bless us later. And that that was what I wanted to see happen. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm asking now, well, was there a master plan for this campus? No, we didn't even have plans for the next building. Right. It was out of necessity mm -hmm. that we built the building. I, I, and still today, and could care less about a building. It's it, our emphasis has been on helping people. And I, I want to see people's homes make it. I mm -hmm. want to see people's marriages make it. I want to see people's finances make it because I believe that's God's plan. Right. I, I don't believe God's plan is to see us not make it in life. That's it. And, and I just have a desire mm -hmm. to see God's plan fulfilled in people's life and they live blessed, happy, right. and the abundant life. And we have to have a building to get out of the rain. 
Did, we have right. to have a building to get out of the heat. It wasn't a building and then try to get some people. That's right. We had people and then we had to build a building. Mm -hmm. And every building we built, we did so because we had too many people to fit in the last building. That's right. We just built this classroom complex right. because yeah. we couldn't fit any more kids anywhere but, we yeah, were. We're just running, and, run out and of our, money. And our, once again, I never did want to build a school. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have a big Christian school. Mm -hmm. We want to take the kids that come to this church right. and teach them and train them. Mm -hmm. I don't build a Christian college. Right. I have no I desire to have a yeah. college. Oh, yeah. I want to take young people mm -hmm. and teach them how to stay married and how to be successful in life. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's always driven us. And that's why I think we have always have been noted as being a discipleship ministry, because really that describes this church and what we do here. That's exactly right. You know, a lot of the new people that have come in the last even 10, 15 years, yep. You know, we didn't have all of this campus. We were landlocked. Yeah. You know, it wasn't it was just not what back 20, not 2009, 2010, that we were able to acquire more property mm -hmm. here and, yeah. and, and build more buildings. But we were really limited to just, and, and once again, you know, not, I, I wasn't attracted to the buildings because there wasn't really any buildings here. Mm -hmm. But I remember um, this, and, and I'm sure you remember this, but when I came here, you and Terry and your two girls, who were very young at that time, y'all lived in a mobile home, and um, we would have all the interns come up and pack that thing out, barely enough up. room to get anybody in there. Yep. And uh, you, I remember your truck, your old red Chevy, and the reason I remember it because that was the envy of every high school boy in the late in the early 80s when that box Chevy came out, right? Well, yours wasn't an envy. Yours was, <laughs> yours was smoking and burning oil. Well, I was oil. proud of it, though. You were. I mean, it, but I remember putting oil in your truck. You burned about as much oil as gas, and I remember getting in it with you two or three times when we'd have to go up to the top of the mountain where the village was, and which there wasn't e hardly no, anything no. up there yeah, at there all. Nothing there. Uh, but your truck would barely make it up the hill because you just didn't have yeah, enough There was a lot of hills I couldn't pull. I'd have to back down and go around the block <laughs> to get around that hill because it wouldn't pull. I'd, I'd have to ask you, hey, have you checked your oil lately? And yeah. I'd go out there and check it for you. There wouldn't be hardly any oil sticks. It was so, always low. Yeah, and so we always had oil in the back yeah. of the truck and I'd pour some in it for you. But you know, I think that's important for people to hear because that's the heart of Christian ministry. Yeah. It's not, we're gonna have a lot of nice stuff to start with. No, we're just gonna start with what we have and where yeah. we're at and yeah. very little money. Yeah. So this is not a building program we are in. Yeah, no. Our numbers in church, I've never counted. I don't know how many come to church. I don't know how many was here last Sunday. I don't know how many be here next Sunday because numbers are not what we're into. I wanna to minister to those people that come here on a Sunday morning and teach them how to overcome the obstacles that the devil brings in their life. Yes. And however many that is, we're not trying to build a church. No, no. Well, that's why we have, you know, made all of our facilities multi-purpose facilities. You know, we, we okay, yep. well, we need to have an event there. All right, let's move all that move stuff all out of the way and set this up. Sure. As a matter of fact, my office that I'm in right now, which I've been in several, I started in a broom closet, but this, this office was a schoolroom. And before that, it was a, a house. We had a we had a lady that lived, Lift. the church secretary lived in that room. That's it. And that was her apartment. So yeah, it's so just, here's here's a hole, here's a corner. Let's meet mm. right there. When I, I never forget my wedding in 1992 and you and Terry officiated here in this building. We had concrete floors. It was all metal open beams, no drop-in ceiling. It was pigtail lights. Just the light off. bulb that hung yeah. down on the wire. We had some really beautiful yellow and orange chairs. Multicolored. Man, they look good. <laughs> Multicolored <laughs> chairs. Made my, I, they made my wedding look really good. Yeah, We had a big purple curtain back there on the back wall. Yep. Just, you know, we just did. It's what we had. That's what we had. It's what we had and it's what we did with. But our focus has been a discipleship ministry. That's it. And that's, that's it. what we want to do. That's what we're all about. Uh, we're not about numbers, we're not about money, uh, we're, we're about seeing people overcome the attacks of the devil That's in it. their life and seeing people live the blessed, abundant life that God has mm -hmm. for them. That's what we want to do here. That's it. That's and I'm it. thrilled to be celebrating 50, 50 years. years of doing this. Woo! 50 years. 50 years of doing this. That's a long time. That's a long time. And God has been faithful. God's been faithful.